So we're going to look at the area under a derivative function. Uh, now this is not going to be an overly complicated idea, but it does have some wide ranging applications. Uh, so it is a very interesting thing in terms of some of the higher level questions. So let's take a look at a fairly straightforward example. So here I have a graph of f of x equals 4. You can just see this green line here. Now this is my velocity function. What a velocity function of 4 represents is somebody moving at a speed or a velocity of 4, let's say, meters per second. Now the question I'm going to ask is if someone is moving at a constant rate of 4 meters per second, for five seconds, how far have they traveled? And you can do this maths in your head. Uh, four meters in the first second, and four meters in the second second, and four meters, and four meters, and four meters. Four times five is 20. There is a more fancy way to do this, and that is to find the area under this velocity function. The area under the velocity function, let's take a look. For 5 seconds, the area is 5 times 4, which is 20. Um, now, obviously, for an example like this, with a, um, with a constant velocity, it's probably easier just to use your, like, year 8 maths to know how far this person travelled. Like, travelling for 5 seconds, 5 times 4 is 20. But, of course, if the velocity function was more complicated, for instance, if their velocity were going up and down, they were speeding up and then slowing down and then speeding up and then slowing down, we don't have some grade 8 maths that's going to let us find out how far this person has travelled. But integrals make that really, really easy. Just find the integral of your velocity function between 0 and 5, and you'll know how far this person has travelled. Formalise this a little bit. We can say that the integral between a and b of a rate of change function, or dy dx, is equal to the total change between a and b. So to go back to our specific example, the integral between a and b of displacement with respect to time is equal to the total displacement over time a to b. Now, this doesn't just work for velocity curves. Um, it's where it's any rate of change at all. For instance, perhaps this function wasn't a velocity function. Maybe it's the flow rate of a tap. So water is coming out of a tap at the function sine x plus 4 litres per second. If I want to know how much water has come out of the tap after 5 seconds, I can find the area under the flow rate function. So to formalise it, uh, the change in litres with respect to time, if I find the integral of that in a and b, I'll know how many litres came out of that tap over time a to b. Maybe I was filling a balloon with um, air. The balloon fill rate could have been this function. Um, again, litres per second, that's how we measure air. Uh, and this would give us the total air in the balloon over that period of time. There's an interesting problem here when it comes to something that's got um, area below the curve and area above the curve. So if this was a velocity function, you can see that at the beginning, the velocity is negative 4 metres per second. That means that someone's running backwards. At the end, the velocity is 6 metres per second. That means the person's running forwards. So, and you can see that they're slowing down, they're slowing down, they're slowing down, they're slowing down. Their velocity is zero, and then they start running forward. Basically, what this person was doing was running backwards really quickly, then running backwards slower, then slower, then slower, then slower, then turning around and running forward again. Now, if we want to know the distance that they travelled, we would find this area and this area and add those areas together. If we want to know their displacement, we find the signed area. We just do the integral from zero to five, and that will give us the displacement, the net change in their position over time. Um, I haven't gone through like a lot of work examples in this video, but I just need you to understand this idea um, that the area under a derivative function gives you the total change 
in the original function over that time period. It's up to you now to attempt lots and lots and lots of these questions. These are higher end questions, but they are something that you want to become familiar with.